How do you get money to start a business? Well, a lot of people will tell you it's not even possible, and I'm here to tell you there's a lot of options for startups to be able to get funding. As a matter of fact, today I'm going to show you my top five helping well over 40,000 business owners through the process of getting credit and financing. Uh, we have found five that are the most popular and easiest to probably get approved for that may work for you and your business. And we're going to dive in today, decode the best ways for startups to get financing and tell you every Every single thing you need to know in order to get approved. Uh, we got a lot to cover within these five, so let's dive in. So obviously, starting a business, uh, a lot of unique challenges, right? You don't usually have any business credit established at this point. Uh, you might have damaged personal credit. Let's be honest. I mean, as entrepreneurs, we're risk takers. So typically when we start a business, our credit isn't the best because it reflects the risks that we've previously taken. Uh, in a lot of cases, you might not have the cash flow. You don't have the revenue that opens up and unlocks most other funding opportunities. In today's climate, cash flow financing is the most popular kind of money you can get. That doesn't work in a lot of lending situations unless you've got a year time in business. And we're talking about getting the money to start the business. Um, so, and again, you might not even have any assets that can serve as collateral. So a lot of things working against you in your quest to be able to get the money you need to get your business off the ground. Now, luckily, there are plenty of options to overcome each of these challenges. And today, that's exactly what I'm going to talk to you about. I'm going to talk to you about ways you can get funding regardless of those individual circumstances you may find yourself in. And again, I'm going to teach you how to get money even if you don't think you can get approved, even if you've been denied before, even if others have told you that it's not even worth trying or that you can't get approved. I'm going to give you options today that I don't know anybody can get uh, and some other options that you need one thing or another to be able to get approved for, but way easier to get than other kind of traditional financing. So let's dive right in. We'll start with number one. So business credit is probably one of the best options you're ever going to find when it comes to starting a business. And the reason for that is, is because any business can get it. Any business can qualify. So you can get this as a brand new started business. Like if you start your business today, you're able to start applying for business credit if your business is set up the right way today. Uh, on top of that, you can get it if you're in a high risk industry. So if you're in the trucking industry, if you're a real estate investor, real, real estate agent, these other situations where it's harder to get financing and traditional banks don't want to lend to you, you're still able to get business credit as well as you're able to get it if you have no cash flow. So if you're just starting a business, you don't have revenue. You, you don't have money coming in the door yet. You know, So that means that you don't have tax returns to show revenue like SBA wants. You don't have six months or 12 months worth of bank statements like cash flow lenders want. You don't have six months worth of merchant account statements like merchant cash advance lenders want. You just don't have the cash flow to verify. Well, business credit, you're able to get approved because there's no verification of cash flow. And it's not based on revenue or income. Uh, you might you, you don't need to have collateral either. It's called it's unsecured. So when we look at financing, there's really two main types. There's secured financing. It's secured by something. When you're a startup, lenders really like secured financing because like if you default, there's something they could take back of value that gives them some sense of security. Maybe it's you know, you collateralize the loan with whatever it may be. An SBA loan might be your house or might be account receivable, something they can uh, use to take back if need be. Uh, but again, you know, if you're a startup, you don't have collateral in a lot of cases. So business credit, you're still able to get approved. You're maybe even able to get approved if you've got that damaged personal credit barrier, which a lot of entrepreneurs, especially that start businesses do, because like I said, uh, it kind of reflects your willingness to take risks. That's why we have damaged business credit when we start businesses. So what I love about business credit is it works in all of these situations. It works when you just can't get any other kind of financing. If you have a business set up, an entity set up, the business is set up where it's fundable, which we'll talk about in just a minute, uh, then you're able to come in and get approved. So if this is making sense to you, do me a favor and hit the like button along the way. And I always love to say hello to everybody. So as you come in today, make sure you just tell me where you're from. Say, hey, Ty, it's, uh, you know, you don't have to say your name because it shows up here. Just, hey, hey, I'm coming in from uh, Tampa, Florida, and tell me wherever you're from so I can give you a shout out. So the other thing nice about, so how do you get business credit? We've talked about uh, the why it makes sense. You can get it when you can't get anything else. Let me tell you about some of the benefits here. First of all, by building business credit, you become more fundable. So what that means is it means lenders and credit issuers look at business credit profiles and scores to determine three things. Should you get approved for credit or financing? 
how much money should you get and what rates and terms should you pay? So the bottom line is if you in your business want to get the most money at the best terms and get approved versus denied, like business credits, the ticket, the key to making that happen. Plus, if you do this the right way, and I'll walk you through briefly the steps, you're able to get $10,000 limit credit cards very quickly into the process. I'm talking about 30 to 90 days, depending on your pace, you're able to do this. So imagine having bad credit, no cash flow, no collateral, and starting to be able to get $10,000 credit cards in 30 or 60 days. It sounds crazy, but that's exactly why business credit is so amazing because it allows you to do that. Once you build a credit profile and score, you use that for the business to basically fund itself and be able to qualify for these high limit accounts. SBA says that the limits on business credit cards are 10 to 100 times higher than consumer credit. So very high limits very quickly. And this happens because your future approvals are based on your business credit scores. And all you have to do to get a good score is like get accounts that report to the reporting agencies and pay them as agreed. That's it. So if we can get accounts that report to the reporting agencies and pay them as agreed, then we get good scores. And those scores are then used to determine uh, how much money we should get in the rates and terms we pay. Um, and this is publicly accessible. Your prospects, your clients, your competitors, lenders, credit issuers, suppliers, anybody that wants to access this can. And that goes a long way when you're starting a business because credibility is very important. You need everything that gives you credibility when you start a business because there's a lot of things you don't have that show the credibility when you start a business. So, excuse my dog. Somebody just came in as barking in the background. Disregard her. So, again, business credit, ton of benefits that it can help you to be able to get your business off the ground. Let's talk about how to get it really brief. So, first of all, the very first thing we got to do is set up our fundability. And what I mean by that is that fundability is important because fundability is the basic of getting any kind of credit or financing. And what I mean by that is that this is what lenders and credit issuers look at to determine like, is your business even legitimate? Is it set up credibly? Is it set up the right way? Uh, and so what happens is that you know, you could be a really well-established business or a brand new business. And when you look really well-established, lenders and credit issuers want to give you money. But when you don't, they just simply don't. Bottom line, if you're a sole proprietor and your home address is your business address and your mobile phone is your business phone number and you, you don't even have a website set up, and then what? You're going to try to go to a credit card issuer and have them to give you credit? Why would they? And that's what's interesting is if you ask yourself, why would somebody want to lend me money? Then you oftentimes say, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even lend myself money. This is where fundability comes in. By structuring your business where you can have a lot of credibility, this goes a long way to getting you money, especially in the very beginning stages when you yet haven't established all the other things that lenders are looking for. Uh, banking history, merchant account history, uh, you know, longevity and time in business. We don't have all these things. We got to rely on fundability to pull ourselves through. So just simple things like setting up a business name, getting it to be a corporation at LLC. If we choose these kind of entities, getting an EIN number, um, getting a Dunn's number for Dunn and Bradstreet, setting up a business address, a business phone number. A, a, a home address can work okay, but other sources like Walmart will give you grief over it, while other people like Amazon won't give you grief with the home address. So using Regis, DaVinci Alliance, like virtual uh, office type places versus virtual addresses. You want to stay away from PO boxes and UPS addresses and all that kind of stuff. You never want to use your, you know, you, you so you want to try to establish a business business address. It just gives you more credibility than a home. You want to get a business phone number. Make sure it's toll free. List it with 411. Don't use a mobile phone or a home phone as your business phone on applications for credit finance. It gets you denied. Set up a business website. Set up a, an email address that's congruent with your website. My email is info at creditsuite.com. My website's creditsuite.com. The two are the same, right? You don't want to do Gmail, AOL type email addresses. You want to get a license if you can for your business. You can get one in your county, in your industry sometimes. If you can get a license, get a license. It goes a long way to giving you credibility. We supply our license with any applications for credit or financing, whether they ask for it or not, just because it gives us credibility. Setting up a bank account, setting up a merchant account for your business. Uh, these are just basic fundability factors. Now, there's 125 fundability factors we found. This isn't the training to teach you that. 
If you go to youtube.com forward slash credit suite, and you just type in fundability or type in fundability on YouTube or probably even fundability on Google, you're going to find our training on fundability that will more in depth break down what you need to know about this. And at the bottom of my slides, you'll see links to completely free guides that acts that you can access all kinds of funding options and step-by-step -step business credit building and fundability. So keep an eye on those as well, because that can give you uh, some more insight when it comes to fundability and business credit building. Uh, and hello, Cameron from LA, Mary Ann from Kentucky. What's up, Stockton, California, Sydney? Thanks for coming in. Amber, thanks for coming in from Arkansas. We've had a lot of Arkansas going on in the last couple of days. I love that. And uh, Danielle, hello. Thanks for coming in from Missouri. Tim, what's up, man? I have everything I need, but I'm a new business with only one month in. That's okay. We're going to help you today to be able to tap in and get the money that you need. So now we've built our fundability. Now we got to get what are called starter vendors, supply work, strategic network solutions, Granger. You line again, a lot of training on our YouTube channel about vendors you can use to start building business credit. 97% of vendors don't report the credit they give you to the reporting agencies. We've got to find starter vendors who will give you credit when you have none and report to the reporting agencies. I gave you about uh, four of them right then and there, and there's even more again in the, the guides you can download at the bottom of my slides. This one has my phone number, but as we continue on, so. We got to get five of these guys. Five of these payment experiences on the business credit report gives us trade lines, which give us a credit report, which gives us a credit score. Then we use that to come in and start getting retail and fleet credit. Now, retail and fleet credit, retail credits, credit from retailers. It's Amazon, Walmart, it's Sam's Club, Costco, it's Best Buy and Apple and Dell and HP and, uh, you know, you get it, Nordstrom, Macy's. Almost every major retailer offers corporate credit without a personal guarantee. You're not liable for the debt. And without a personal credit check, you can get it regardless of personal credit quality. So we want to get retail credit. We have five of these payment experiences. Then we want to get the fleet credit. Fleet credits, fuel cards, right? It's repair of vehicles, maintenance of vehicles, fueling vehicles. I don't care about fleet cards because I like literally work from a home office here in downtown Tampa. Uh, but if you're a trucker, <laughs> you care about fleet cards. Those could define your business. So fleet retail credit starts to open up after those handful of payment experiences. We have about 14 accounts in your business credit reports. Then you get auto financing and you get bank credit. Uh, with bank credits like Visa card, MasterCard, Amex card, all without guarantees, all without credit checks. One of our clients got $185,000 in financing at Ford without a personal guarantee or credit check. It's pretty crazy. That's what's possible with business credit building. Ford, GM, Toyota, Ally, they all offer auto financing without a guarantee and credit check with 14 accounts. Those all become available. Now, if you look at this whole thing, Pretty impressive. Starter vendors immediately relieve cash flow constraints. And what I mean by relieving cash flow constraints is simply when you start a business, you don't want to come out of pocket with the cash you have to buy everything you need. You can use these starter vendors to get credit for a month, month and a half, two months, not come out of pocket, uh, finance that stuff over months, get the business off the ground. The business starts generating money to then help you pay for that credit. It just eases cash flow restrictions, which gives you more cash to grow the actual business. Then we immediately start to get into retail credit. Not a lot of stuff we can't buy nowadays on Amazon, right? So Amazon becomes one of the first you know, retail credit sources you get a month, two months, three months in, and you're start to be able to use them and Best Buy and Apple and Home Depot, Lowe's, right? Difference. I mean, if, if you're working in a home office, you maybe need Staples, Office Depot. If you're working in construction or in you no know, real estate investing, well, then Home Depot and Lowe's is more valuable. It doesn't matter. You know, handful of accounts in, you start to get that, the fleet credit, the Visa card, the MasterCard. You literally can fund your entire business just using this one of five options I'm giving you, uh, which is why it really is my number one. I think it's one of the best ways to get startup funding. Retirement plan financing is another really good one. And, and there's a caveat, of course, you or someone you know has to have a retirement plan. What's a retirement plan? It could be stocks or bonds, 401k or IRA. In all fairness, retirement financing is really 401k or IRA financing. I'm going to throw stocks and bonds in the mix as well. And I'm going to give you a couple interesting, a lot of interesting insight here that you might not have thought about. So first of all, there's no tax penalty. Okay. So I could take money out of my stocks, bonds, 401ks or IRAs without paying penalties, without paying any kind of additional fees to do so. The 401k program kind of works like a rollover. So instead of rolling it over to another employer, you're rolling it over to yourself. 
So think about it. 401ks are you investing in other people's publicly owned companies. What we're doing here is rolling it over to invest into your own company. Is it a good idea? I don't know. It depends. Do you believe in yourself, what you're doing, the business idea you're chasing? I mean, that's your question to answer, not mine. Um, I'm the kind of guy where I'd rather have my money in businesses that I have ownership interest in than in other publicly owned companies. I control my own fate. <laughs> Even when I owned a mortgage company, the mortgage company was crashing and I was going under. I still remember saying at that time, hey, I'm cool with this. Like if I'm captain of the ship when the ship sinks, I can live with that. What I don't want to be is be the passenger on the ship when another captain crashes it. So it just depends on your own risk threshold, right? But bottom line is I've seen a bartender uh, or a bartender, a guy start a bar and try to get 25 grand at his bank and couldn't. He was a retired cop and he went in and got 401k finance and got a credit line against the 401k and got 5% interest and 750,000 in financing. So he couldn't get 25 from his bank and got three quarters of a million in this. So something to at least consider here as well. So how does this work? Well, I'm gonna, when it comes to this, there's a couple things you should know. First of all, it can be your stocks, bonds, 401ks, IRAs, or somebody else's. Why is that important? 75% of business owners statistically get money to start a business from family and friends. I'll repeat, 75, three out of four people statistically get money from family and friends to get a business off the ground. Well, the interesting thing about this is, is if I go to my dad, and I often use this example because it's a real one. If I go to my dad and say, I'm going to start a business, I need $25,000. My dad would help me get the money because he knows I'd be good for it. And he would sell his stocks, right? He wouldn't go to his bank account and pull 25 out. It's in stocks. He would sell the stocks. He would pay penalties on that money to get me my 25. Now he liquidated stocks. He's not earning interest. He paid a fee. He paid more in fees just to give me the money. Now, I could also go to dad and say, hey, dad, I need 25 grand to start a business. But instead of taking it from your stocks and bonds, I just want to get a credit line against like your stocks and bonds, one of them. And that way I can get a $25,000 credit line against it. I have a 5% interest rate really low. You still keep the stocks invested. They still earn interest. You pay no penalties, but I'm leveraging that to be able to get the money I need to start and grow the business. And if my dad's a, an entrepreneur type mindset, then I can go and dad. I'll give you 5% ownership of the interest in the business, 10%. I don't know, nothing. My dad wouldn't take it, but family, friends, potential investors. There's a lot of people right now looking to put their money where they feel it's safe. Real estate's inflated. They're not comfortable with the stock market. They want to invest into privately owned companies. So there's very well people around you that might want to get a rate of return, an interest rate on the money they're giving you access to, or get ownership interest in your business. Uh, and you get the benefit of having really low interest money, 5% or less, leveraging their stocks, bonds, 401ks, or IRAs to get it. You can borrow as much as 100% of the value of, of 401k or IRA, 90% of stocks and bonds. And again, I got to be honest with you, securities-based financing is one of my favorite of all time because it's cheating. It's I don't even understand how it works. It's cheating the system. It's double dipping. And what I mean by that, cheating the system, it's legally cheating the system. Think about it like this. I have my money. And I put it in the stock market because the stock market gives me a rate of return. Now my money is here working for me in the stock market. Then I get a credit line borrowing against it, still working for me in the stock market. Then I use the credit line to take the money and also use it to grow a business. I have the exact same money working in two different places to get me a positive rate of return. It's kind of crazy. It's the same reason you'll see so many people talk about life insurance policies is the best place to put your money. Because when you put money in a whole life, okay, you've got it sitting there and you get it with all the tax, the benefits. So if, any, if anything happens and you pass away, but then I can borrow against that money, get a loan, and then I can go use that money for something else. I'm using the money in two places for two different purposes. That's why I like about this financing, as well as the fact that you can tap into your own stock sponsor 401 ks or IRAs, or you can type into somebody else's instead. And again, uh, if you don't mind, if you're getting value, hit the like button and also tell me where you're from. I'd like to give you a shout out. So alternative lenders, a lot of alternative lenders going on. Let's talk about financing in general. Two main kinds you're going to run across. Traditional financing, big banks, Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo. These guys offer SBA loans. Really tough to get to startups. You don't want to go in your bank to get startup funding. 
because what they're looking at is things like called a bank rating, which keeps you, requires you to keep like 10 grand in your bank account to have a high enough one. You don't have that as a startup. Uh, it's SBA funding. You got to have like really pristine personal credit, established business credit, tax returns for years, collateral. You don't have that as a startup. So traditional banks, you just kind of want to not even think about it. We want to look at what are called alternative lenders, also called fintech lenders, very popular. Over 90% of money now comes from these guys. And this is where we want to go as an alternative source to get money. So for example, Blue Vine is a really good one. Uh, you need a few months worth of operation, three, six months worth of uh, of actual revenue. You need a, a 530 credit score or higher, uh, and you should be generating some revenue already in order to get approved. But if you have that, this is a really good solution to be able to get you some financing here. Okay. It's a credit line that you're able to get. Now, one that's easier than this, I'll talk a lot about a little bit later. And there's some states they don't work in North Nevada, North Dakota, South Dakota, Vermont, but the rest they do. On deck is another really good one. 600 credit score requirement. They're going to want you to have some revenue. It is based on your actual bank account. So you need to have about six months of business to get approved, but another really good one as well. Funbox is my favorite. If you have any revenue coming in for about six months, then Funbox will get you a low interest credit line uh, based on the, that revenue. You know, you should have three, six months worth of revenue, and then they'll plug right into your bank account. And if you're managing the bank account responsibly, as long as it's a business bank account, then that can give you a small credit line, two, three, four, five, ten grand. Uh, if you do have tax returns, they could bump you up to thirty thousand dollars or higher. One of the easiest credit lines I've ever seen to get comes from Funbox. So. Some beyond this that aren't mentioned on my slides include PayPal, Square, Stripe. These three are really other three other solid ones that will give you money as well. Six months time in business, they'll give you as much as 30% of the revenue you've processed with them. So if I'm processing $10,000 a month, then they'll give me 30,000, you know, or, or uh, they'll give me whatever that $36,000 loan. So whatever I, I process in a year annual revenue, I'm on track to do, they'll give me 30% of that advanced to me. So a lot of money, sometimes no interest, low interest, don't care about credit. I love those sources as well. The problem with Blue Vine, On Deck, Funbox, PayPal, Square, Strike, all these guys, you have to have some kind of revenue. These are about six months in. Right. So we talked about business credit you can get right out the gate. Then about six months after generating revenue, all these options become available for you in the alternative lending space as well. So some things to think about. Now, before you get to that six month space, you now have business credit. You have stocks, bonds, 401k, IRA financing. And now we look at credit line hybrid. Credit line hybrid is my absolute number one top favorite funding program for startups. There is nothing better that in the market that exists in this program. And I'll tell you why. First of all, you're able to get 0% interest rates for the first 18 months. So what's nice about that is as you start a business, you need to buy stuff to make the business work, right? Then the business, you got to fine tune some things and pull some levers and make some sales and money starts to come in. So what we need is we need money to start the business as cheap as we can possibly get it for as long as we can possibly get it cheap. So then we can come back and be able to then get the business generating revenue to help us pay uh, the payments on what we're borrowing. Credit line hybrid, 0% for up to 18 months. You're not going to get better than that. So it keeps your payments super low, which is very important. Plus, you can get approved for upwards of $150,000 with this program. Plus, a lot of the credit lines you'll get report to the business credit reporting agencies. So we're building business credit while we're getting up to 150 grand. And we can also take money out. We can take cash out of the program at 0%. It's why it's called credit line hybrid. A credit card, the benefit is 0% rates up to 18 months. Credit line, the benefit is that I could take cash out at a low rate. You put the two together, I have the ability to take cash out at 0% a huge benefits of credit line hybrid. You're able to get it as startup. You're able to get it as a, as a high risk industry. Even if I just started my business today, I can get this program. What do I need to get approved? Good FICO score, 680, 700 FICO score, some kind of established revolving credit already. Um, 
I won't drill down every requirement, but you want to have like not a lot of inquiries, less than six in the last six months. You want to have your utilization on your existing credit cards low, like lower than 40%. You want to have two, three years worth of credit cards on your consumer credit report now to show some kind of longevity in history. And just like stocks, bonds, 401ks, IRAs, I don't need to have good credit. I can use somebody else's. So 50% of the clients we fund for this program, they have bad credit. They're just using a family member's credit, a, a family member, a friend, a potential investor's credit to be able to qualify as well. So again, I can go to my dad and say, dad, instead of liquidating your stocks to give me 25 grand, I'll use your, your credit to qualify, get my credit lines, and I'll get ones that report only to the business reporting agencies and like it won't even adversely affect your credit at all. So except for the initial inquiries, which really won't lower the credit scores, pretty much anything at all. So again, great program to tap into your credit or somebody else's to be able to get up to 150 grand at 0%. Can't beat that. That's that's ridiculous. Uh, crowdfunding, a couple different ways we can go here. One of which you probably don't know about, most don't. And crowdfunding, what we're used to is this stuff right here. Let me see. I'm going to go past all this. I'm going to go to like these crowdfunding platforms like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. So crowdfunding works really good. There's two kinds of crowdfunding. The second you might not know about, I'm going to talk to you about as soon as I talk about the first, because it's one of the best ones. Uh, it's probably the best one. But the crowdfunding that we know about is called rewards-based crowdfunding. And the way rewards-based crowdfunding works is that we put a project up on a place like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. They are what's called a platform, right? We are a borrower. We want money. And then they have what are called backers. They have people that are willing to give money for whatever things. And the person that comes in and contributes to your crowdfunding campaign gets some kind of reward or incentive to do so. They may be pre-ordering your product, whatever it is you're selling. They may uh, get a reward of whatever bonuses you want to give out to them. But they get a reward for ultimately contributing money to the, the campaign. So what happens is we start a campaign is what it's called on a crowdfunding platform like Kickstarter. And we say, hey, we have this new birdhouse that has uh, some kind of music in it that sounds just like male birds during mating season and then female birds flock to it. I don't know, I just made the stuff up. And it's really unique, it's really different. I'm gonna start a campaign. And then all of a sudden other people see it and go, that's awesome, I love birds, I want this thing, I'm gonna contribute. And then we say, okay, there's three levels. You can give us $50 and get like a, a $25 Chili's gift card, or you can give us $100 and like we're going to subscribe you to Bird Watchers Magazine, or you give us $150 and you pre order this birdhouse when it comes out. Like you already pre ordered it. So this is like we establish bonus levels of what they could actually, if you give us X, you get this reward. Remember, it's rewards based crowdfunding. So rewards based crowdfunding, really good way to get money. But it works best if you do two things. First of all, in order for this to work, you really could, should consider something unique. You've got to have some kind of unique product and service. Like it can't be real estate investing. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to tell you how to get real estate investing money from crowdfunding here when I talk about option two. But on option one, rewards-based crowdfunding, we can't be real estate investing or selling like, you know, whatever, a normal business. Like this is something unique, different product and service typically is what makes these work. Because in order for it to succeed, it's got to go viral. Like you can't just throw something on Kickstarter and expect a bunch of people to chip in money. If you want it to go viral and Kickstarter to show it to everybody, Kickstarter has to see there's a lot of activity right away. You got to line up backers right from the beginning. You got to have a social network that as soon as the campaign goes live, they're willing to share it. That happens. Kickstarter goes, man, this product is awesome. Everybody loves it. They show it to more people. It goes viral. You get money. So if we look at the biggest crowdfunding campaigns of all time, they're from bands. They're from artists. They're from athletes and stars. They're from people that already have big followings. So what that tells us is we have to have the ability to get it out there to our social networks, typically for this kind of crowdfunding to work. Now, there's a couple of platforms you want to look at. Kickstarter. Uh, is one of them, probably one of the best and most common types. Uh, uh, and you could do uh, project, uh, taboo projects, perks, including anything to do with, you can't do this stuff. Weapons, alcohol, contest raffles, they don't do that kind of stuff. But other kind of normal stuff they will do and they take 5% or whatever you raise. Indiegogo is another one. And what's interesting about Indiegogo is they have what's called flexible funding. So Kickstarter is fixed funding, which means if you want to raise 10,000 through Kickstarter, if you raise 9,500, you don't get a dime of the money. You got to hit your goal or get nothing. And they give the money all back to the backers. 
Indiegogo has flexible funding. I can set a goal of 10 grand, only raise five, and I still get all my five grand. So that's what I like about Indiegogo, flexible funding. You can get all your money even if you don't raise what you're trying to raise. Uh, Rocket Hub is another cool one. I've never mentioned Rocket Hub ever before on a webinar or any kind of training. And this platform is specifically for business owners working on projects in art, business, science, social. And if you reach your fundraising goal, there's a basically a 4% fee. So reaching your fundraising goal means that it's fixed funding, okay? So when we look at Rocket Hub, it's a perfect example. If we're going to go through rewards-based crowdfunding, we want to try to find a platform that works in our industry. There are ones that are just really good for art, and really good for science, and really good for like tech companies. So we want to try to find the right kind of crowdfunding platform um, for our company. So some things to keep in mind as we go through this. And again, if you're getting value here, hit the like button and tell me where you're from. Um, I always like to say hi and say, give you a shout out. So the Thomas family from Papano Beach. Hey, what's up? And uh, hi-ho. Uh, thanks for coming in. God bless you too as well. Thanks for coming in. Okay, so again, uh, crowdfunding, pros and cons, some things to think about. Fixed versus flex funding. Do you have a unique product? Now, I'm going to introduce you to a second kind of crowdfunding most know nothing about. It's called equity crowdfunding, and it is one of the hottest new ways to get money for your business. Here's how it works. You've heard before of venture capital. You've heard before of equity investing. You've heard before of angel investing. Basically, there's two kinds of money you can get for a business. There's debt. I get a loan. I get a credit card. I get a, loan, I get a, a, a line of credit. And then there's equity where I don't take on debt. I take on an owner. Somebody, I give them stock in my business, ownership interest in my business in exchange for their financial contribution. Basically like an angel investor, they give me 50 grand. I give them 5% ownership in my business as an example, right? So when we look at this, it's always been pretty hard to get. As a matter of fact, I read a great book on angel investing and I swear to you, I swear, swear, swear. The very first chapter said, okay, if you want to succeed in angel investing, the very first step is to move to Silicon Valley. <laughs> and I'm laughing. I'm like, that doesn't work for me. Like, I, I love Tampa. My life is here. I'm not moving to California or move just to be able to get the funding. But that's the idea is that if you want the money, you got to go to New York or California, these hubs to physically in person pitch these investors. With equity crowdfunding platforms like Crowdfunder, that doesn't exist anymore. Now what happens is you can go to a place like Crowdfunder and they have all of these investors in one place. You put your project up, which is basically like, hey, I have a business I'm launching and I want to raise $100,000 and I'm willing to give away 5% equity of my business. You, you select the terms. You put up a video, explains it, everything you want to sell them on the project. Then these angel investors and venture capitals, they are going in there and looking at it and then they contribute money. So it's a way easier money to raise money to launch a startup than chasing angel investors one at a time. And here's the cool thing. There's equity in, in crowdfunding platforms for real estate investors, for all different kinds of niche industries where rewards-based crowdfunding won't work. Here's how cool it is. Like literally, I sit right outside the port of Tampa and I have this big horn because I've got a cruise ship right here. It's getting ready to take off. I'm literally looking at two cruise ships. One just came in and one's getting ready to leave. So I look because I heard this big horn. Anyways, ADD. That's why you don't do trainings like this with people with ADD. So equity crowdfunding, love it. If you want to raise private money, equity crowdfunding platforms are the way to go. Now, go to youtube.com forward slash credit suite. And just type in crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding. You'll find my presentation on it. In my last presentation on equity crowdfunding, I think I give you 15 or 20 crowdfunding platforms to look at. Just know when you go to look at equity crowdfunding, you really want to look at the right platform for your industry, the same as rewards-based platform, uh, rewards-based financing. So some things to think about, keep about, keep in mind there. We've already talked about fundability. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm going to skip past this. But before I do recap, I do want to talk to you a little bit about um, some of the other options you can get money for as a startup that I didn't mention here. There's a great one I love called Giggle. Yeah, Giggle, like G-I-G-G-L-E. Giggle does financing for gig workers. So if you're in a gig business, like a ride sharing, stuff like that, Giggle will give you like five grand really easily, at, even to get your business off the ground. So I love Giggle financing. It's great if you're in the gig industry. It's one of my favorites for 2021. Um, on top of that, we also want to look at what other kind of assets you may have that can serve up as collateral. 
So we talked about stocks, bonds, 401ks, IRA. Maybe you have an old piece of equipment, a backhoe or something. Maybe you already have inventory for your business. Maybe you have uh, account receivables. Your customers are paying you on terms. Maybe you have purchase orders to fulfill or, uh, any, or you have commercial real estate or commercial vehicles, or maybe you want to get into house flipping. There's financing for all of that as well. So there's financing for all of that stuff as well about, I don't know, seven, eight. I know I promised you five and I've given you like 20. I can't help myself. I, I under promise over deliver all the time. It's, it's one of my faults. So that's like 20 different ways to get financing. Now, if you want even more, go right there. Creditsuite.com forward slash live dash 27. If you go there, there's a guide that actually give you 27 ways to get money for your business, most of which work for startups. So make sure you check that out as well. So we've talked about a lot of unique ways to get money for your business. Just make sure that you know to set up your business where it's fundable. Tap into some of these like business credit, credit line hybrid, no brainers, and a lot of others that may work for you as well. Next time we're talking about setting up your fundability, including setting up your address, your email address, your website all the right way. Okay, and don't forget, if we can ever help you with financing, we charge you this much money, zero to get it. We don't charge fees on the back end. We don't charge fees on the front end. You give us a call and if you can qualify for loans or credit lines, we'll get you with the funding source to get approved. We've got over a thousand funding sources and we never charge you a dime. Don't get me wrong. We've got a phenomenal business credit building program. If you want to build business credit, have somebody help you through it, have a finance team that guides you through it, improve your fundability, a whole comprehensive system that'll help you. And that does have an investment. And we could talk to you about that as well if you're interested. But just because you watch this, you're entitled to a free consultation. So give us a call for that. On the consultation, we'll do a fundability assessment to help you fix whatever needs to be fixed with fundability. We'll get your business credit reports for free and give you tips and tactics to establish your business credit. And we'll also tell you all the funding you can get right now. It all happens on one completely free consultation call. You can give us a call at 877-600-2487 for that. You can schedule online at creditsuite.com forward slash consult. And if you got value, like and subscribe. Top right of our page, creditsuite.com. You can access all of our social links. We have daily tips on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We have one minute video tips on a TikTok, on Insta as well. Uh, we also have a podcast you can listen to on the go. Thousands of videos on our YouTube channel, all different kinds of places you can go to access every single thing you could even think about needing to be able to get money for your business. So make sure you check out those social links as well. Silverman Fox from New Jersey came in and said hello. Um, you killing game. Thanks, man. Thanks, World Beat. I appreciate that. And Nancy, thanks for coming in from Chicago. I appreciate you saying hello. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to give us a call for our free console. And I look forward to talking to you on our next training where we dive more into fundability, especially office address set up to teach you the secrets of what it takes to get approved, what lenders are really looking for in your address to approve you. We'll be talking about that in our next training. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.